Today we're heading outside of Mexico City by about two hours in the mountains to a place called Valle de Bravo. We're going to go out and see uh, what kind of fun we can have with some time lapses today. Before we do that, we're going to talk a bit about camera settings. There's really important things that you need to set up inside the camera to make sure this time lapse is going to look as good as you can get it. Well, first off, before we even start talking about menus in this, one of the more important things is going to be that you're not setting on any auto exposure modes. You need to make sure you're in the full manual mode for this. Now, once you're in manual, now you have to kind of decide on what kind of file structure you want to shoot. Most of you are going to be shooting JPEG. The JPEG, there's nothing wrong with this, but you're just going to have to make sure there's more things set in the camera before you start your time lapse. So in my case, I shoot raw files. The camera that I specifically use is only 12 megapixel. That keeps this a much smaller file. The raw file gives you a lot more information to be able to edit. Think of it like this. Uh, raw files kind of like you've bought all the ingredients to a cake and a JPEG is like you've got a cake. If you get that cake home and it's too sweet, too bad. You have a cake that's too sweet. If you have the raw file, you have all those ingredients, you can toss out your product and start over again. So when we're talking about settings, these will be very important when we're talking about JPEG, where if you're shooting in a raw file, most of these can be changed during the editing process on the computer. So uh, I'm going to take my camera, I'm going to set it up with, I've got a 35 millimeter lens on here. And I'm going to go to a pretty high aperture so I can get a good depth of field. I'm going to set up my camera behind me. So I'm going to be in the frame also. You get to see me eat my entire lunch. I'm going to go ahead and pop around my tripod now. Get her all locked in and double check it. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my shot all framed up. Now other than the file structure, if you're shooting a JPEG, you want to make sure your very next stop is your white balance. White balance is going to tell the camera what the coloration of the file is supposed to look like. If you leave it in auto, and let's say you're shooting a sunny day scene, and a cloud comes over, it might change the coloration of your overall video. Consistency is key in time lapses. If you can set it to daylight or sunny, now it's going to keep that exact same white balance through the entire video. You also have, you notice here, shade and cloudy, incandescent. You might call that tungsten in your camera. Now that we've got that set manually, I also want to go in and make sure there's a few other things that could potentially ruin this time lapse turned off. First, if you shoot any kind of long exposures and you've turned on your long exposure noise reduction, you want to make sure that's turned off. Similarly with stabilizers, some cameras like the Sony's, Olympus, and Pentax will have an in-body stabilizer, where if you have one on your lens, you want to make sure either of these are in the off position. In-body stabilizers and in-lens stabilizers, when they're on a tripod, will actually usually cause motion that can make it look kind of like a blurry or out of focus picture. You want to go ahead and make sure to turn off the auto review so it doesn't show you the picture after each one. That way you don't miss any frames in your time lapse. You want to make sure that you've focused, double check it, and then flip off that autofocus switch. Now you don't have to worry at all about any kind of discrepancy during shot to shot. If somebody walks in front of the camera, it doesn't readjust. Now, something very crucial before you really invest time is to make sure that you have the best exposure possible. You want to make sure that your highlights and your shadows are showing exactly where you want, so when you get back, you can edit the file properly. Here, I'll actually just show you a picture that I'd taken previously in Norway. I'm going to pull it up in review, and I can look and see it's a little bright, but to see exactly what's going on, I'm going to pull up my histogram and what's known as a highlight warning. You can see on the top of the glaciers it's flashing in black at me, and that's telling me that I've overexposed or I've lost detail in the brights. So flashing at us is telling us that we need to lose a little bit of exposure or take some light away to get the balance. The next exposure, I took one stop of light away, and you can see we've maintained the detail within that glacier. And if you look on that left-hand side, it's still not touching that line. It means the darker places still have shadow detail. When I go back to edit this file, I know now that I can really see everything in every area and make this a really dynamic time lapse. We just talked about the camera settings on the next episode. Now we're gonna actually talk about how motion in front of your camera plays out and the intervals you set in your camera and the shutter speeds are going to affect that motion. 